All right, so let's talk system prep tools as well as disk imaging tools. So we've already talked about SysPrep. We've already looked at the importance of SysPrep and how it works. We already know that it's located in the Windows System 32 SysPrep directory. Well, again, we use this to generate new SIDs or new security identifiers. This is extremely important when we are doing disk imaging. The goal is to run SysPrep right before we capture the image. That way we SysPrep it, shut down the image, then do our capture. That way, when our image is pushed to a new machine, when that machine comes online, it has new security identifiers. This was super crucial in the XP early Windows 7 days. However, it is still equally important. So remember, it's important when you're using imaging software to always sysprep them because again, it does the generation of new SIDs. While there are many third-party tools out there like Stormwind or other companies out there, most of them will do it for you. What's interesting is a lot of organizations will use imaging to create machines quickly and that are also uniform. You can run sysprep from the command terminal. You can do things like PNP, generalize, or OOBE, or out of the box experience. OO out of box experience. Or you can just do the graphical by navigating to that path and opening up sysprep exe, and it gives you a graphical tool. You can memorize all the switches, but again, these aren't necessary anymore. Advantages is they generate new SIDs. So when we're doing this on a large amount of computers, we don't have to worry about renaming or regenerating user accounts, things like that, because the sysprep tool has already done this. And the more amount of computers we have with similar hardware, this does greatly reduce the deployment time for all of the machines. Disadvantages are things like image creating, uh, capturing wizards, third-party software, it sometimes can be expensive, sometimes it makes it a little bit harder. Versions of SysPrep is shipped with Windows 10, must be used. Older versions of SysPrep that are not part of Windows 10 are not functioning the exact same way. So if you're working with Windows 10, you have to use the Windows 10 version of SysPrep, otherwise it is not going to function. All right, so that is basic system preparation using sysprep in a nutshell. All right, so let's see where this is located. We said C drive, Windows, System32, sysprep. And again, here is the GUI version. If you double click on it, we get the, if we want the out-of-box experience. We also have an audit mode. More often than not, you're going to be using the OOBE and you can generalize it if you want. This is where I think most people mess up. Shut down. That way you run sysprep and then you shut it down. If you restart it, it starts the new install, uh, it starts the new user when you bring it back up. But if, remember, if we're using this to capture an image, we actually want it turned off without it loading that generate generating a new user type setting. If we do shut down, I will click OK. It takes a few minutes to clean up and to generalize. When we're doing this, it's just a matter of being patient, letting it do its process.
right, now it's shutting down. And that's it, it's turned off. This is where you'd capture the image because when you deploy the image, it will be treated as if it was a brand new machine. However, the, all the file structure and all of that stuff is still there. Our shares are still there, the, our old users are still there. It's gonna generate new SSIDs, it's gonna generate new identifiers for this machine. Okay, I'm getting a, because I, I got a VMware display issue because it's loading a generic driver, which that's to be expected. And this getting ready process is generating the new SSIDs, generate the new SID.SSID. It's generating all the new content behind the scenes like we would be expecting. And this does take a while, so it's going to treat it as if it's a brand new machine, so you just have to be patient with it. It may restart once or twice as well while it loads Windows. and it's going to treat it as if it's a brand new machine. Which means running back through the wizard. Oh, I don't want another keyboard. It would treat it just like a whole new machine. But that was because when we did the OOBE, we told it out of box. It's as if it was just a new machine being pulled out of the box. That's what that meant. So if you go to the store and you get a new PC, realistically, this is what they did. They opened your machine, they updated it, they may have uninstalled some software, then they ran sysprep, told it to shut down, and then they give it to you. That way, when you get it, you have to do the initial walkthrough for your user. 
If it's a uh, shadier company, they may even um, they may even let's do it. I don't want to. They may do the user prep for you, and not even give you those options. I've worked for a few companies, but that's what they did was they. Uh, did uh, all of it for you and they didn't understand sysprep so they just didn't run it so you got your machine with a user already created that was called admin and that was it that's just because they didn't understand the use of sysprep so this is how we use sysprep and when you're doing this for multiple machines again it helps because you don't want all the machines to have the same SSI the same SID nor do you want them to have the same PC name. So this generates all of that information automatically and makes it unique. So that is system preparation tools in a nutshell. I'm not going to wait for the end of this process because it does take a little while. If you have any questions or concerns, definitely feel free to reach out. Thank you.